I am Kevin with Onyx Maps. Uh, thanks all for hopping on. Um, so the MLS had purchased uh, access to the Hunt app for you guys to use to, in your sales and uh, wanted to go through the basics of like redeeming the code. If you have an existing account, how to turn off uh, your existing membership so you can redeem the free membership, uh, running through common problems with redemption or troubleshooting steps to take, and then go into uh, basics of how to actually use the product, um, go through every feature that would be applicable to you guys, and then even some outside of work. And then uh, we'll jump into a Q&A at the end and answer any questions you guys have. So to get started, um, what I wanted to pull up, if you guys can all see my email, this is just a sample of uh, one of the emails that went out to all of you. Uh, this was just highlighting your member benefit, uh, a few of the details of the, the product and your redemption code. What this gives you is one year access to the Hunt app product. And so to start, I just wanted to show for the, anyone that had trouble or hasn't redeemed yet, uh, walk through the actual redemption process. So in that email, it's just titled BSC MLS Member Benefit Onyx Hunt. Um, if you need me to resend it, feel free to shoot me an email and I could resend it to you as well. But in that email is your unique redemption code and the instructions to go through the redemption. So the first step is to go to hunt.fyi, which is our redemption page that I have pulled up here. If you already have an account, you would click log in and log into your existing account and enter the code. But let's just pretend you don't have one and what it looks like, let's go fake email. I've done this a few times and I've done it enough that I don't know what is already taken. So I'm just going to make a fake email and a fake password. Obviously, you guys would enter the email and password you'd want to use for your account and then your password. And you click next. And from here, it'll ask you to redeem your membership. And that's where you would hop back into your email, take that code. I'm not going to redeem this for you guys, but uh, you would copy it, paste it there and hit apply and then it would bring you to a confirmation screen with, with instructions on downloading the app to your phone and then uh, it would bring up the map on your computer. And that's what I'll show you after this. Um, so common problems, if you don't end up copying and pasting, um, sometimes this is not a good example, but zeros and uh, O's can get mis misread um, or just a, a common typo. And sometimes the actual error message will say, Let's just type a different number here. There's an error in the code or it has already been used. And I found that gets noticed the most. Um, most of the time the code has not already been used. It's just uh, double check for typos. But if for some reason you double check, it still is uh, an issue. Definitely reach out, just send me an email directly and I can research it and get the code applied. Um, shouldn't be a common problem. And then if you ever need your password reset, I can walk you through how to do that on the account um, and then any other account maintenance issues. But that's, that's really the main one. Um, the other issue you might run into is if you have an existing account with us already, um, because Apple and Google Play have their own specific rules, if you already have an existing like membership, um, you can't redeem a code for a free membership while you have an active membership with Apple or Google. So um, what you need to do is actually uh, turn off automatic renewal for your membership. This will prevent, you know, when your one year membership is up in one year from the original purchase, uh, prevent Apple or Google from automatically renewing it for another year. What you need to do is if we go to our support page, which is pretty easy to find from here and then to support. And I always just find it by search and cancel, which I'm sure our customer service team loves that we get so many searches there from me. How to cancel my hunt membership and turn off automatic renewal. This will ask where you purchased it from. So if you bought it on your iPhone, it would be through iTunes. If you bought it from an Android phone, it'd be Google or from our website to be there. From any of these, it'll walk you through how to go into settings, go to your account, subscriptions, and you would cancel subscription. For most of these, if you haven't just like purchased within the last 72 hours, what it does is it just turns off automatic renewal. So your membership that you purchase will still active, it be active and work until its regular expiration date. Um, so you'll have to wait until that existing membership expires. Then once it does, 
you would just follow the instructions on the website, on the email, enter that code. Um, and instead of going and creating an account, you would go here to the hunt.fyi, hit login, enter your login information, and then redeem the code. And then it will allow you, since you don't have an active membership currently, any of your existing waypoints or current data from letting your membership lapse, those will stay and remain and carry over. And this will just give you that full free year the MLS had purchased for you. Um, and then all the instructions again are for Google or for our own website as well. And it highlights, you know, none of your information is lost and all of that. But if any of you guys have trouble doing any of these instructions too, uh, again, you just go to our main website, onyxmaps.com click on the menu at the top, go over to support. And then I always find it just by searching cancel and it'll be the first result on there and have the instructions. But again, feel free to shoot me an email if you have any trouble as well. It's easy to walk through and all of that. So those are the, the common questions I've been getting, but uh, outside of that, uh, I just wanna hop into actually using the product, how it can be a benefit to your guys' sales and, and work. So let's say successfully redeem the code and you're ready to use it. I'm gonna show uh, most of the demo from the computer version, but then I am mirroring my phone screen. I'll pull that up too to show how it syncs between everything. But the actual uh, experience and usability is the same across both platforms um, with the exception of offline maps, which we'll go into as well. But to actually get to your maps from any computer, you just go to our website, www.onyxmaps.com. And from here, you would go to login at the top right and choose hunt map. Oh, I remembered that I was logged in. Let me log out just to show you the full experience here. My account, let's let it load, log out. Okay, from here, you would enter your email address that you use for the account and password that you used either when originally signing up or when redeeming the code and then you would click login and from here it it'll ask you your uh if to enable location so that it the map will actually know where you're currently located it'll show your blue dot on the computer um and then so the basics to know here's your full map screen and just starting from the top down uh, this is the layers tab, which uh, will allow you to customize the map and show different data sets on the actual map, depending on what you want to see. And I'll go into each of those. My content is any markups or uh, waypoint saved. Offline maps is a cool new feature we just launched for the web, uh, enabling you to schedule maps to download to your phone when you're ready. And then help in settings lets you customize a few different, if you want to change units or any other specifics you want to adjust in there. And then possibly might be useful if there is a specific property you want to showcase, you know, in a printout, you can actually hit print. It'll take a screenshot of the map and uh, let you print that from there. And if anyone has one of our micro SD card like chips, um, having a membership does give you free updates to those. And this at the bottom right walks you through that. Um, so on the far right, this icon up here with the little arrows will just center the map on your current location. Keep in mind that uh, on your computer, most don't have a built-in GPS unit. So they uh, will just use based off of like what Wi-Fi you're connected to. So it might, might not be an actual precise location. It will be within a few feet to maybe, I've had it half a mile away sometimes just depending on where the computer detects it. But to give you a rough spot um, and then to zoom in and out, you can either click here or just scroll using your mouse. And then at the bottom right, these are adjusting your base maps to uh, change the view of the actual map outside of like our data. So you can have the satellite view or a topographic view. And this will give you, uh, for anyone familiar with mapping, it'll it's a 24K uh, topo resolution, which is just, I believe 24 feet between each line. So it's a higher resolution so you can see uh, any sort of mountain or raises in terrain or anything. Um, and then hybrid is just a combination of the two. It's our satellite imagery with the topographical view overlaid on top of it. And you can adjust those at any time just down there. And I'll go into this area at the top when I get to my content. But the uh, first thing to show you that it's kind of our bread and butter 
is all of this data that's on top of it. This is under map layers. And what Onyx Hunt does best is we take a combination of hundreds of map data, including uh, like plat books and uh, hunt unit maps and anything relevant to outdoors. We digitize it and overlay it so it's easy to access when you want it um, in the field or on your computer. And so those are called layers. And just think of it kind of like a hamburger. You just have your, your bottom bun as the, the satellite imagery or topographical view, and then you're stacking whatever information on top of that. So as you turn it on, um, I think the most relevant for you guys is going to be private lands, which um, we get our data for Montana. We get it straight from the cadastral. And um, this overlays with orange outlines. And this will show you who owns the property. And if we zoom in on any of them, let's go down to Miller Creek. Some of these, as you see, like aren't popping in yet, but as you zoom, their property boundaries will load as well. Let me close out of this. Let's go in more and you can see down to every individual property owner, it'll give you the actual property boundary based off of their tax records and uh, the cadastral, their, the owner's name. And then if you click on any of them, it'll tell you their owner, their taxable address and the acreage for any of those properties. And from any of those, again, you can just zoom in and out. If you don't see one, um, it's usually just because it's a smaller parcel that you have to zoom in on too. And then the larger ones as you zoom out will show. So like a large property over in Lolo or Miller Creek, you can click on, it'll highlight the exact boundaries for it. Give you the, the owner's name, taxable address and the acreage for all of that. And that's the, the private land ownership side. So obviously useful if it's, you know, two acres in this area, you can actually show where that, how it's shaped, what it looks like on a satellite view or in relation to topographics, if there's mountains nearby or anything. Um, but then we also, based off of our private land ownership data, we generate uh, government lands, which will be public lands or any sort of, you know, government owned lands. And those are shown with a color coding system. And you don't have to have it memorized or anything like that. Um, they have the names listed on them. So let's go like up here. So if it has an overlay, like a color to it, that's going to be public land. If it doesn't, and it has this orange boundary, that's going to be a private landowner. And for like the state land, you can click on it. Same thing. It'll tell you the owner and the acreage. But where this is useful, obviously, is if you are let's say highlighting a property in Lolo and uh, you want to see if there is any public land nearby or you want to showcase the, the recreational opportunities nearby, you can use that to find out quickly what public land is accessible, what the distance is, and I can show you how to actually measure out the distance using the map too. But it's a really cool way to quickly find where there's public land nearby that might not necessarily be known. Um, and then there's a ton of other ones for, for hunting related. The hunt districts are mapped on there and you can zoom out and see as it loads. Again, my internet is hit or miss sometimes. This will list each hunt unit. You can click on any of them as well. It will tell you more information um, and to like the regulations you can click onto there, the region it's in, how many deer were harvested in what year, a ton of information and obviously relevant to hunting, but depending on the client could be useful for them to know. Um, possible access is those will be private landowners that traditionally do allow hunting, usually like uh, logging companies or so. So like up Highway 12, um, this one is highlighted as this kind of dotted system. If I go into it, it's Warehouser, which traditionally, I, I'm not sure with nowadays, but um, they'll allow hunting. So another cool way to see if there's possible recreational opportunities nearby. And then obviously for Montana, we have the block management program for hunting. Those are, you can turn on and off. Restricted access, so you know, specific spots. I think more relevant just for the hunter to know the actual restricted area boundaries. Um, chronic waste and disease management areas, hunt district portions. I'm not even sure what that is, but if you ever have questions on it, you can click settings and it'll actually describe the layer for you. So a subunit of hunting districts that has its own given tag or special regulations. And you can break it down by the actual species as well. And you can do that for a lot of these, like uh, for, I think hunt districts too. Yes, you can specify it down by each species as well inside settings. 
and then uh, Upland Gamebird projects. And those are specific to the Montana layer, which is what the MLS had purchased for you. Um, and then with any subscription, we also have uh, layers that apply nationwide. And those are our Hunt, Trail and Rec, and our Water layers. And Hunt has a, a ton of cool information like a, precipita a precipitation radar. Um, roadless areas is actually uh, a custom build that our team put together. And it, it's a color-coded system of areas furthest from any roads, which obviously for hunting, you know, that game will try to populate away from where a lot of activities at. So to find some cool hot spots, it goes from dark, there's tons of roads up to this light color where there's not much road at all. Pretty cool. Um, partnership with QDMA, you can see CD, CWD distribution. Um, you can see Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation projects of where they've opened up public land. Uh, again, all of these, I, I think other cool ones that might be relevant, uh, you can see when timber cut areas. I know mushroom hunters absolutely love to know when an area was thinned. Um, and obviously for hunting too, I think animals like to, to graze as things rise up. Um, U.S. Forest Service uh, wildlife layers, uh, like if they are huntable, they'll show up on the map too open a moose over here kind of thing. Um, obviously right now, I think pretty relevant. We, we get our information from Cal Fire, I believe, and you can see active wildfires on the map. Um, those start as just these little fire icons, but um, I think it still is actually showing on there, the Bozeman fire. As you zoom into it, it will pop up the actual acreage where the perimeter is. You can click onto it just like any of our data sets, you can see active wildfire, the name of it, the current acreage, when the data is recent from, um, which is pretty useful. I always just pop into that to see where the, all the smoke's coming from. And as you can see, everywhere is on fire. Um, outside of that, if I turn it off, you can see historic burns and obviously relevant for hunting. Again, as new vegetation grows in, a lot of mushrooms as morel hunters will go into, um, or just wildlife like to graze on that, you can see all of uh, these and they're color coded based off of recency. But as you zoom in, it will show you the year or you can click onto it and you'll know what fire it was, the year it started, the acreage, all of that that burned. Pretty potentially relevant. Um, and then wilderness areas, again, just kind of uh, data sets that might be useful, might not be, but you can turn it on, on and off on a given basis. They even have mapped prairie dog towns on here, which there's not a, like a ton mapped on Montana, but you can see as we go east, it'll actually, I think they use satellite imagery to identify known prairie dog towns for prairie dog hunters, apparently. And you can zoom in to actually find a lot of those. And then uh, a very relevant area is trail and rec. This will show you, uh, Trails, which is based off of a ton of different data sets uh, combined. It'll give you recreation sites like trailheads, campsites, lookout towers, uh, boat launches, fishing access sites, and so on. And those are shown as these little icons down here. So if we go down to like Florence, that's identifying a trailhead. And since I have the trail layer turned off right now, if I turn it on, you can see what that trail is. You can zoom in on it. You can actually click on that as well and it'll tell you the name of it, what activities are allowed on it. And if you actually, you can turn on a, two more adjustable layers for the trails themselves, trail mileage to see the actual distance between these dots. So that's two and a half miles. That location is 4.4 miles. So you can kind of gauge distance. Slope is, it, is another color coded system based off of elevation change. So red is where there's steeper elevation incline. Green is where it's easy, pretty flat ground. So you can see the difficulty of the trail. And then uh, motor vehicle use trails as well are mapped out on here. And then as we scroll down, there is some water. It's, it's not it really relevant in Montana. We don't have a bunch of water data, but um, they have river stage forecast, nautical charts. A lot of this is like Great Lakes, but um, we are expanding the actual water offering. But if you hop into Topo, that's the way I found easiest way to identify lakes and rivers and streams in the map as well. They quickly pop and you can see a lot of the lake name, 
any creek, any water feature at all, all on there. So that's layers. Um, there's also layer library. So the thought is instead of having to, if you only use, you know, five or 10 layers ever, you can actually disable the ones that aren't relevant just to declutter things. So like for Montana, if you don't really care about like the upland game per, per project layer, you can go into layer settings, put back in the library, and now it's not gonna actually show anywhere on here anymore. The only way to find it is to hop into the layer library, go back to Montana, and now it shows in there, you can add it back to your My Layers group. And again, you can see a description and all of that. Um, we do offer obviously maps for all 50 states. That's uh, the MLS had purchased the premium membership, which is good for one state for the state of Montana, but um, there's the option to upgrade to the elite membership by calling our customer service at a discounted rate, which gives you access to all this mapping data for the entire country. Um, and from there, obviously you turn on and off layers and turn off on and off what states you would want from the layer library. And that's layers to start. Then let's say we have, yeah, private, government, trails, all of that. Here's where we get into the markup tools. So. As I had mentioned before, if you wanted to showcase a property and highlight like its distance from the nearest public land, let's say, or to water, um, let's say it's this property right here, you can, as I zoom in, let's get the name to pop into. There we go. You can go up to the top and we have uh, multiple different tools, but the, the line tool is for measuring distance or for marking out uh, drawings essentially on the map. So if you click into that, here's where it, it, you would name whatever markup, color it, you can do all of this after the fact. But at any point, if you click on the map, so let's say we wanna show how far it is away from the river, click on the corner of the parcel, and then just bring the mouse over to the water. As you can see, oh, to finish the line, you double click. And they'll tell you the total 329, 300 yards, call it or so. And you can actually adjust after the fact too. Or if you make a mistake, say I don't want that, you can go down to the bottom left and hit undo and it will undo features as you should. Let me see if I, well, it should. Oh, I think it's for if you accidentally misclick, I apologize. So then once it's actually made how you want it, if you just want to have this, this information saved, you could then customize it, change the color, however you want, the style if you want it more dashed, and then the weight is the thickness of the actual line. And then you can add any notes here for yourself or if you click on to it, um, let's say test line and hit save. Now if I click onto that markup, it will give me more information and my notes, total length, all of that. You can edit it from here. You can actually share it to other Hunt users um, or delete it. So I'm gonna delete it in this case. And that's for measuring out. Um, you can do not just one line. If you do multiple, click to click to click, it'll show each different segment, the distance, the distance, and then the total as well, which might be useful. So let me close out of that and discard it. Area shape is just for measuring acreage. So if you want to segment out, let's say just where, like let's say the lawn is on this property, I can click one section up to here, down to here and down to here and then double click, it'll tell you the acreage and then uh, the, the distance in feet for each side of that segment as well. And that doesn't have to just be a square, that can be, any shape you want. Um, you just highlight the boundaries and hit save. And again, you can customize the lines, but then you can also color, customize the, the color on the inside, which is pretty opaque, but still customizable. And then same thing, weight and style and notes. The other tool is waypoints, which is just for marking, I mean, easy to find, or get back to areas. As you can see, as I zoom out, I do have quite a few on here. This is just so you can quickly jump back and, and see where that specific location was, if there's a cool feature or something to note on the property or on the way there. Um, like I'll show you these tracks and this was a hunt I was on, um, different features that I had. I, but if you hit add waypoint 
And at any point, if you want to add it, just like the line tool, you would click on the map. Oh, I have to customize it first. Let's go camp. Let's go, where am I on? I might be on our beta build for here. It should pop up the waypoint as you click and then you can customize what the actual icon looks like, the color of the waypoint. You can actually add photos to it, which I'll show you on the phone using that and save, but let's go to an existing waypoint I have since it doesn't want to cooperate on. They give me the employee build and there's a, a few new features they're rolling out that they like to have employees test and they don't always work perfectly, but so like, my boss had actually shared me this campsite because uh, there's great fishing right outside of it. Not easy to see. Um, so it was shared by him. So I actually can't edit that um, because if someone shares a waypoint, they don't want you to change it. But hey, here's one I had saved. So any information that it'll give you the lat long, I can edit it. I can share it from here. But if I edit it, this was because there was a cool water source I found, but I could change it if I was hanging trail cams. Or if you hit more, there is a ton of customization for the actual icon, whatever relevant you want to mark it as, if it's a trail, whatever it be. Or you can just use our static icon of X as a location, or there's possible access, or just even where the house is. Um, and then at the bottom, again, I can change the color and add any notes, and I can add photos as well. So I'm going to discard those changes. It's going to go back to the same. And then add photo is just the same as tying to a waypoint, but instead of having to save a waypoint and then add a photo to it, you can hit add photo and upload any photo from your computer to it. Or again, as I show you on the phone, you can just take a picture directly or from your phone photo library, tie it to that waypoint. It'll ask what location so you can geotag. Then uh, we'll hop into my content, which um, as I was running through, it's organized off of uh, the markup type, which is, there's lines, areas, waypoints, and um, each of these are organized by date, or you can customize sort of by whatever relevant way you would want. And then you can filter out um, what type of waypoint, or if it has a photo, or if someone shared with me, just you'll find after using it for a while, it can get cluttered and it's easy to filter out stuff. Or you can even have it just show um, based off of the waypoints that are on the map, only list the ones here that are showing. Um, and that's just a way to organize all of your data and to quickly jump in. If you do remember, like if you have a spot named, like I had a good fish spot saved, you can actually click it. It'll center the map on that waypoint and you can zoom in on it. Looks like this was identified up Rock Creek. Shocker, there's a good fishing spot up there. Um, and if you had a photo waypoint, it would show in there as well. Um, here's where you can also, uh, for any people that power users for maps, like if, if you have markups or information from other sources like Google Maps, you can actually kind of do similar line tools and customizations. Or if you have like a route saved on a GPS that you'd like to import into it, this is where you can actually import your data. So you can import uh, their specific GPS files called KML or GPX. But if you have them, you drag them into here and they can upload into here. Also, if you'd like to take these markups to a different service or to, yeah, like to a GPS unit or something outside of the, the web version, you can export your data from here as well. And that's my content. And then, um, as I mentioned, again, help in settings. I think everything else isn't needed really much of a training on. The, the cool thing to show you is offline maps. And I, I'll jump back to this after I show the phone. So let me jump to my phone here and make sure you all can see it. Can you guys see my phone screen? I, I'm hoping so. It says it should be shared to here. Yes, we can see it. Hurt. So just like on the computer, it's, um, it's the same login, but you would go to the app store on your phone. So in this case, on an iPhone, you just search Onyx or Onyx Hunt. It'll be one of the first results. If you search it, it'll be right here and you would download the app. And when you first download it, it'll prompt you to log in or sign up. And since in order to actually get your free membership, you would hit log in because you had already done so on the computer by creating your account, you would log in using the email address and password that you used when creating your account. And then it'll pop up to this screen. So there's a few bits to know that might look a little bit different, but the same relevant information is on here. So on the bottom bar here, 
you have layers, offline maps, my content, map tools, and tracker. So the only one that um, you didn't see that's on the phone part is tracker because it requires a precise GPS location. But what that, that lets you do is based off of that blue dot on the map right there, you can actually record a breadcrumb trail of your dis or your trip or wherever you're going. So if you're walking a property or doing a drive and you want to see how long it takes or whatever relevant it would be to you, you would hit there and then hit start. And then it'll start recording as you're walking and it'll le actually leave a dash trail of your trip. And at any point you can pause that if you're stopping to get gas or anything and you don't want to log that for the time or whatever. And then you hit resume. And then when you're done, you hit stop. It'll ask you to name it. You can add notes if you want, and then uh, you can save it or discard it. And then just like on the computer, map tools are all here. You can do the same distance, shape, you can add waypoints, add photos. But that, as I had mentioned, if you want to like add a photo waypoint, so let's do add photo and let's uh, take a photo and we'll allow access, sure. So here's some weird, crazy stuff at my desk. Let's take a picture of the adapter, sure. Use photo and it automatically based off of where I'm located, drops a waypoint and adds the photo to it. So you can click on that photo I'm sorry, click on the three dots. You can view, share it, add more photos. I'll, I'll explain the go to waypoint or hide it. If I hit view edit, it's gonna pop up, show the actual photo. You can click on it and see it full screen as well. And if you have multiple photos, you can scroll through it here. And then just like on the computer, you'll have your notes, all of your other customization tools to change it. I'm gonna delete that for now because I don't need it, but also, you can do so by adding a waypoint, which I can click and tap on any point of the screen to drop that waypoint. I can either just save it as is, or I can name it and hit done. I can choose the type and then save. You can also customize it from here, adding additional information. You can add photos if you want, notes, change the type. You can actually share it with other people as well. Um, and then, exact same other things. The shape tool, you can tap around, measure out distance or acreage. Same for the line tool, measure out length, and we'll show you all of those. Um, my content, just like on the computer, is all of your information organized. If I want to hop to that, just like I saw on the computer, I think it was right down here. Good fish spot. If I click on it, it's going to bring the map right to that spot so I can quickly go back to it. And as we saw, the uh, private lands will show you without uh, an overlay. Public land, you'll know, has the color coded on it. And you can see it's deep in quite a bit of public land. Um, same thing on the computer, map layers. You can turn on and off all of those. The layer library is here as well. So very similar experience, just kind of organized for easy use with your thumb. Um, on the right here, I don't even, I can explain it, but 3D is we, a new feature we're rolling out soon where just like on Google Earth, you can actually view a 3D view of it. Um, to start, that's only going to work on iPhones and on your computer version. On Androids, that's coming, but I don't have a date. Um, so I, wouldn't, I, I couldn't commit to when you'll actually see that across every platform, but it's in beta right now. And to show you, if you click onto it, It'll actually switch the map and with two fingers, I can pan, let me switch the map so you can actually see a 3D view of it with all of your relevant information, which is pretty cool. There, it, it is a little glitchy right now because it is in beta. So I don't really like to showcase it that much, but just know that is coming and that will show right where it says 2D. If I want to switch back to it, I would tap there and it's going to switch the map back to 2D. So from there, here's where you can switch your base maps right below that 3D beta icon. Sat is what your current base map is of satellite view. If I tap that, it will switch to topo. If I tap it again, it'll switch it to hybrid. And if I tap it again, it switches back to satellite. The crosshairs will go to your location. And then below that is weather. So um, we use currently, I believe, weather undergrounds information, which uh, is a third party provider. And it will, based off of known weather locations uh, and your location, show you what the actual weather is like. But as you pan around the map, it will adjust the weather based off of the nearest weather station. 
So if you're trying to see what it's like, you know, down here, again, might not necessarily be relevant um, for MLS use, but again, just for scouting an area, or if you are planning a trip out to somewhere, you can get a rough idea of what the weather's going to be like. Um, and at any point from that, you can tap on the weather icon. It'll give you, you know, the seven day forecast, precipitation, wind, every bit of relevant uh, weather information, or I can just turn it off if I don't want to see it. So um, at the top right, this, it's kind of hard to see, but there's that magnifying lens. Here's where you can search for any spots on the map. Um, you can search by just actual, like a geographic location. Like if I searched, since it was so popular before, Lolo, Montana location, it's going to bring up a bunch of results. If I tap on it, it's going to bring me to Lolo. But if I also from here search and switch over to, sorry, landowner, you can actually search by a, a landowner. So we'll go to my uh, parents' property here. We'll just search Vine. It's gonna bring up, based off of where you're viewing on the map, it'll sort it by relevancy. So if you're looking in a different state or a different part of the state and you search an, a name, it's gonna pull up based off of where the map's viewed, the closest landowner. So in this case, you click on the property owner and I can zoom in and it'll show exactly what, like when you tap on an icon, their taxable address, the acreage, all of that. And from there, you can search, it'll bring multiple results. Kind of cool to quickly find if you know the landowner or the, the typical location you don't want to pan around the map. And at the top left, there's this little hamburger menu. Just like you saw on the computer, there's my account to adjust your settings, map settings. You wouldn't see employee settings. If you have help or questions, the help center We'll bring up our support page, frequently asked questions, and then contact us is if there is support related questions, if the map is glitching out or there's a problem, um, this puts you in direct chat with our customer service team. And then if I click into here, you can share the app. Uh, our blog highlights features of the app and inbox will be relevant information about like new features of the app. We don't have any right now. But like when 3D launches, that'll show up in the inbox with a tutorial of how to use it. Um, my account, here's where you can change your password and you can add a profile picture or edit your email address with it. Map settings, just like we saw on the computer, you can adjust your coordinates and units. Secret spot, spot mode is just um, very relevant to hunting, but just so you know, it, it hides like the lat long. If you want to share a screenshot or share a waypoint but, or image, but you don't want the end person that's seeing it to know the exact location, you can turn that on and it'll hide the coordinates so they can't do a little detective work to actually find out where that is. Um, and then a few other customization settings. So the last thing that's really important to know is offline maps. And that's at the bottom here um, next to the map layers. And what offline maps does essentially is it takes a uh, sections of the map that you're going to be using that's known to not have any service or if you just want to make sure regardless of service or not the map is going to load this will actually download that map and work completely outside of cell phone service um, and so how it works is if you click into offline maps and hit new offline map it's going to ask what size of a map you want to download and you can customize that right below here between five mile wide 10 mile or 150 mile wide and it specifies what it means by resolution is like the satellite imagery. If you do a, a large one, it's not going to download high resolution satellite imagery. For that, it's, I do that just to kind of cover my base, see uh, that green box is an existing downloaded map. Just, you know, if I'm going to an area and I still want to make sure I have roads and trails available on my phone outside of service, I have a large area downloaded. I'm not relying on satellite imagery there. But if I switch to like 10 miles wide, that'll be a higher resolution. And then five miles wide will be the, our highest resolution available. And what it does is, let's say we just want to download whatever section. You can pan around the map, center it where you want it to save, and hit save. This will start to download to your phone. And um, when you're outside of service, it not only saves, what it saves is whatever layers you have turned on at the time. And it saves all three of our base maps. So at any point in or outside of service, you can switch between a satellite view, the hybrid, or uh, the topographical view at any point. And that saves directly to your device. And it doesn't need cell phone service because your phone has a built-in GPA in it. So regardless of cell phone service, it will still show that blue dot on the map for your location. Um, and then it'll just have the actual map 
behind it and loading just like you're in service, which is really cool. And um, what we saw on the computer was uh, a way to toggle offline maps. And since you can't really download an offline map to your computer, you're not gonna bring your computer out in the field or so. What it does is you can specify the area you want to download to your phone. And what I had done earlier is um, on the computer, I hit offline maps and I, it brings you to that same screen like you see on your phone and you specify the area. But what I had done earlier is see that kind of dashed box? That's a queued map that I did from the computer. And that is essentially tied to my account saying, hey, at some point you need to download this to your phone. And we give the option because sometimes it's easier to, to set things up through a mouse and a keyboard on your computer than on your phone. So when you're ready, all I do is under offline maps, I see this test area that I had queued up before and it has a little down arrow saying that it needs to be downloaded. It's not saved to my phone. If it has saved successfully, it has the green check mark. If it has a red dot, it means we've updated the map to that, uh, that downloaded area and I can click it to actually download an update to that saved map. Um, because again, it saves to your phone. It's not constantly updating like you know the regular map does. Um, so I would just clap, or tap the download icon. Once the first one's done downloading, then the next one will download and they'll be saved to my device. So like that first one I queued up, let me pause these and show you. If I hit go offline at the top here, that essentially cuts off internet connection to the app. And um, it's kind of nice if you're in an area that's in and out of service um, or like right on the fringe, the app will try to stream the map data and then when you're out of service, it'll pull up your offline maps and it can kind of hop in and out. And if it has like weak signal, it'll take a while to load. Sometimes it isn't worth it. So you can actually just toggle go offline. And what this does is it'll only work any maps that I have downloaded. But since I have this section downloaded, all of this information saves. And I have a ton of Montana actually downloaded in the large resolution. But if I were to pan over here, none of it loads because I don't have it saved, obviously. And you know the areas you have saved because you have the green boxes around them. And obviously the, the large one is this 150 mile wide. The medium sized ones, you can see the resolution is okay. Not that high resolution. And if I go to one of the smaller boxes like this guy, it's the highest resolution. So you can zoom really far into the properties outside of cell phone service. So again, showcasing a property, if, if you do wanna bring the phone out to the field and you know there's not gonna be cell signal, you can save all of this information to your phone before so it works and it's just like you're in service. And that's just got a big overhaul. The maps download extremely fast now. Um, if you've used them before, we've gone through a lot of different iterations and made huge improvements. And I think the biggest one was just released a couple weeks ago. And that's why all of these download so much faster. And um, you can also, as you're downloading the map, name them. I never bothered just because I, I end up doing it frantically as I'm headed out the door and just download a bunch of areas. But when I get the time, you can tap on any of the offline maps. It'll zoom to it and I can actually edit the map and I can change the name so I know what it is. And you can, so you can kind of have them organized or you can delete the saved map from there. Um, I think that's everything to know, but again, you can also sort them by uh, how recently they were saved or if they are named in whatever order makes the most sense for you, just so there's some uh, organization to all of the chaos of offline maps. And there's no limit of how many maps you can download. It's all dependent on how much storage you have on your phone, because again, it's saving directly to your phone. And right below the map name is how much size that's taking up. So if you need to download a bunch of maps, but you don't have enough room, you can clear out some of the larger ones, like this large 150 mile wide one, I can click on that, hit delete, it's gone and freed up the, the space on my phone. Um, what else is there to know? Syncing between uh, the computer and the phone is really cool. So anything I do on the computer or phone, they automatically sync that data between them. And um, that does require an internet connection. So say you're outside of service and you mark a waypoint. That waypoint will save and then it'll sync to your computer as soon as you're back in cell phone service. So while you're offline, you can't like save a waypoint and then someone else can view that waypoint but once you pop back into service it'll sync back to your account but so for example let's say i go and like this let's just save a new waypoint add waypoint here hit save so then my content it's going to show 
that waypoint I just saved. And let's see if I can switch back to the computer shared screen. And I may have to refresh for it to pop in. Let me see if I just refresh the map. And then zoom back to my location. Whoops. That waypoint that I just saved on the phone, that X right there is now automatically on there. And then vice versa, anything I do on the computer, it will automatically sync back to the phone. Um, if for some reason, let me go back to the phone side, you made a markup and it didn't come through. It's, I, I, I've never had it happen, but just as a fail safe, if you're ever in my content and you swipe from like right in the middle of the screen down, see that little loading icon? That triggers the app to look for any new data to sync between devices. So I can do that. If any waypoints didn't come over previously, this tells the app, okay, you need to search again. It'll pull it over. But again, not anything you really ever come across. Um, I think that's pretty much everything as far as relevant information to know. Everything is customizable. Um, uh, I saw when I hop back in, I'm, I'm gonna jump into a Q&A, but I did see one question of how often the maps are updated. Um, that is based off of when we can get the data set from the state or the agency or the provider that we get it from. But our uh, efforts are always trying to improve. We strive for at least once every year. It's end up falling usually twice per state per year. And again, that just relies on when we actually get the updated information from either the state, which can be slow sometimes, or from we have some third party providers that can get uh, their own private information that will upload it faster. And whenever we have that uh, updated information, we put publish it to the app. So it's always the newest data available um, out of any sources will be on the app. Um, and then we'll, we'll do minor updates here and there of like, as for hunting, uh, like the block management areas and the boundaries are updated annually. And uh, those are released from Montana FWP probably mid August or so. And within about a day or two of when that's publicly released, we have that uh, uploaded to the app and automatically pushed onto there. And in that case, like offline maps, if I had an area that had been updated, that will show again as that green check mark, check mark, but with the red dot, so I can click on it and it'll update that downloaded map to the newest version and you have the most relevant information. So from there, let's stop sharing my phone screen. I'll hop back to the computer. I am not familiar enough to do Q and A's or if I'm not sure if I can just unmute everyone or what the rules are, but if anyone has any questions, I see a Q and A section on here. Oh, here, pop it up. If we had the service charge for a credit card and now it is offered through MLS, how do we stop our charges? Great question. So that is, um, let me show you. So it depends on where you purchase it. What you would do is you go to our website, onyxmaps.com and go to Onyx and hit support. And you're gonna search cancel. I've shown this at the beginning, but um, it will depend on where you purchase. So if you bought it from your phone. If it's an iPhone, that'll be the purchase source is iTunes. If it's a, uh, an Android phone, that'll be Google. Uh, we actually can't turn off those existing memberships or do any refunds. Those are billed and handled directly through those providers. And I think because we partner with them, our website is, is the exact same. Um, what you would need to do if you've already purchased it before, you would need to go on your device, let's say it's an iPhone, and walk through these steps to cancel your membership what this does is it doesn't delete any of your data or information that you have saved. What it does is, is it tells the app store or wherever your purchase source was to not bill you next year when your membership is up for renewal. Because it is you know, used through the app store, those redemption codes can't be used if you have an active membership. You have to wait for your existing membership to run out. So in this case, what you would do is cancel your subscription. Your service would continue working until your first purchase date ends. So say you bought it in June of this year and you hit cancel subscription, it's going to keep working until June of next year. Then when that runs out, then you would go onto your email, 
follow the instructions on redeeming the code and it would redeem the free year onto your membership and you'd be good to go for a full year from there. I hope that helps. But again, if you have any questions or anything not covered in this, reach out to me directly, let me know. Um, the next one is seven day trial expired. Will the membership service be okay to update onto the established account? Yes, as long as you haven't um, purchased a membership already, if you, the trial is not considered a purchase, it, it's given for free to anyone that has never had a, 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 a product with us before. It gives you a, sev, a full seven day trial. And at any point during the trial or after it's expired, you can go in. And um, the only difference is on the instructions I had sent. Um, since you have a trial, that means that you have created an account. So you, you know, set an email and password for your account. So you would do the same instructions, but go to hunt.fyi. And instead of creating an account here, you would log into that one that you created the trial under, enter the email and password, hit next, and then enter the code and it would give the full year to that account. Um, say you did that, you know, you set up the trial on your phone and all of that information carries over to the website. You would just enter the same information. And then once you hit redeem the code on your phone, it will automatically recognize that and you'll be able to use the service for a full year. Sweet. I'm trying to think if there's any, if I can beat anyone else to the punch of known questions or things you guys might have come up with. Um, but yeah, in the, the Q&A section on the Zoom, feel free to type in any questions you have and I can, if we do not have a code, who should we ask to resend one? Great question. You can either ask uh, Mike Lake or myself. Um, I had sent an email. Let me see if I have one of the sample ones I can pull up. Yep, let's just pull up this one. What it was titled was uh, BSC MLS Member Benefit on X Hunt. So if it um, is in your inbox still, or if you haven't deleted it, you can search it there. If you didn't, if you deleted it, can't find it anymore, you can reach out to myself or Mike, and I can just re-forward that email to you. That'll have your unique code. And after the first year, do we pay for the following years? Or does the MLS pay for it? That is a great question. I'm not sure. We haven't uh, figured out after the first year what we're going to do. Um, it could go either way, but to, to know if um, the MLS didn't purchase the second year um, and you held off for a while, all of your data stays and remains on your account for, I believe, like even a year after that. So you have plenty of time, like, to make a decision if you do want to actually purchase it yourself, if it's useful, if the MLS did not. Um, and yeah, you would just either purchase or hold off, I think after at least a full year, then you'll get notified that if you don't subscribe, your, your account and information will be deleted. Will we be able to get these maps onto an MLS listing? Oh, another good question too. So if you want to get on MLS listing, um, you could definitely take a screenshot. Like if you had, let's say you're showcasing a property, you can either uh, just take a screenshot on your computer or um, right here you would hit print. And this essentially takes a screenshot of um, the actual, what you're viewing on the map, which there we go. I have it set to an actual printer. So it's defaulting to uh, black and white. But if you're on Chrome, at least, I know you can hit save as PDF. So you can actually save that as a PDF file that you can attach to a listing. But um, also on your phone, if you, depending on your device, you can take a screenshot there. You just wanna, it'll take a screenshot of whatever you're viewing on your device at the time. So make sure everything's set how you want it. Um, and then what if we notice the property boundaries incorrect? I didn't think of that, great question. So let me show you on the phone because that's where you can currently report an error. So, if I hit share here, um, if you notice one of them's wrong, so let's say this one, um, it'll depend on the area which you can sort by. If you, if you tap on one of the, uh, the areas, you can find out more information, but down at the bottom, you can hit report error and it wants to filter what it is. If it's a private land error, hit next. And if it's the name, if it's the actual size, the acreage, or whatever it is, it just, it's just so our GIS team can actually 
uh, categorize what it falls under and what source they need to find to, to make sure the relevant information is updated. Let's say the name is wrong. We hit next. If you know the correct landowner name, that helps out a ton. Any additional comments? If you say include screenshot, once you hit report errors, it will actually take a screenshot of the map where you, you know, click report error so our GIS team can know exactly what that looks like, give a little bit more relevant information, and then you hit report errors. Um, how are our error reporting works? Because it is a nationwide product, it does, it's not immediate, but there are uh, a lot of cool things that they're, they're uh, experimenting with to adjust. So right now it's sort of an aggregate of if uh, multiple error reports in a similar location uh, come up, that will bubble up to the top of their uh, list to identify to, because again, it, it is a large team. It's about 40 or so employees in our GIS team handling these, but uh, they will reach out to the county data source, whoever the source was, find out um, if there is new information or find out the discrepancy and update if, if that is in fact an incorrect map. But what we're exploring is uh, being able to crowdsource a little bit of that, where um, if, I don't know if there's a, validation process or what it'll be if like let's say it's your property and the city has not updated the property owner name in a while um they're experimenting with uh being able to report the error but then that uh known name that you type in there will actually show on the map as correct and and then it'll have a little asterisk or something flagging saying possibly correct until our gis team can verify it but um that hasn't rolled out yet and they're still experimenting with the best way to implement it but yeah, you just report it right on the app. You just tap on it and enter the relevant information. Um, can you show where to access off-grid maps? Yes. So um, on the phone again, um, when you're in the app, it's at the bottom here and it's titled Offline Maps. And this is where, as I scroll through, any maps I have downloaded show. If I want to actually download a map, you hit New Offline Map and it brings you to a view of either five mile wide, 10 mile or 150 mile wide of how big of a map area you wanna download. And again, that is just dependent on how much information. Low resolution will be low resolution satellite imagery and it won't save like every individual landowner boundary. So it's more good for general backcountry navigation, roads and trails and property boundaries will show, but like every landowner name may not download. 10 mile wide, does do everything, but the satellite resolution isn't uh, up to full resolution. And then five mile wide is completely the same as if you were on your phone, it'll have all of that service on there. When you identify it, you hit save, and then it starts to download on your phone. But just so we don't sit here and wait for it to download, I'm gonna pause it. Um, what it'll look like when you're outside of service then and have that um, done, you would hit go offline. The app will actually automatically do that when you go outside of service. And it'll show you these green boxes are maps that I have downloaded already. And the map will just look, look and operate just like you are in service when you're in fact not. And the GPS, the little blue dot for your location will still follow you on the map because uh, the GPS doesn't actually need uh, cell phone service. And the map information that you have downloaded will still load and show just like normal. Hope that helps. Um, looking for off grid information. I think it's something like during your previous discussion. I, it might be a wording change. I think we might have changed it from named off-grid. There, there's two things I can think of. Um, offline maps used to be called off-grid, but they renamed it, if that helps. Uh, or we do have a second version of the product called Onyx Off-Road that is just a lot of our same mapping information, but it's, uh, it doesn't have like private land ownership. And we, we make that for like, off-roading like four by fours or side by sides or snowmobiling and it gives you uh roads and trails you can ride on based off of season dates and vehicle types um but the actual product that was purchased for the mls was the uh the hunt product but it sounds like probably off-grid um yeah that's going to be the offline maps um formerly known as off-grid essentially the exact same information i went over but uh just named offline maps now and then can you recent? Yeah, let me take a note just to make sure I do that. And Laura, if that doesn't answer your question too, just um, either give me a call or send me an email or anything too, and I, I can go over any specifics that you would wanna know too. But 
Hope that helps. And then Daisy, I will look up your account and get you that email resent as soon as we're done with this too. Still hold tight for a little bit, see if anyone else has questions too. But again, as I mean, there may be questions that pop up just as you're using it. Um, honestly, the, the, the quickest and easiest is our support page. It, our customer service team is a team of about, um, I think it's up to like 30 or 40 people now that are diehard hunters and um, best in the industry. It's, it's, it's our, uh, our customer service team. I, I can't say enough good things about them, but one of the things they do in the downtime, you know, outside of peak hunting season is they document everything and anything imaginable. And that's again, if you go to our website, onyxmaps.com, go to the top left and go to support. Here you can break it down by category to find out and answer any questions of web map is the computer version of the product, hunt app is the phone, um, but like everything I covered, the map layers and things to know for all of those, you can click into it and it's gonna give an in-depth explanation of literally every layer we offer. Um, or if I go back, just the basic, you know, get started. Basic questions, all of that's covered. And then to the uh, technical stuff like hunt app, um, how does it work outside of service, basic tutorials, all of the markup things I covered, uh, common troubleshooting and so on and so forth. But if you can't find it, um, just by breaking down here, you can search, say you are searching, I wonder if it'll actually pop up off grid. Yep, and they just bring up offline maps. Or if I wanna search uh, photo waypoint, more information on how to do that. How do I edit markups? Um, how do I edit photo waypoints? All of that relevant information comes up in the knowledge base too. And there's 37 articles. Again, they over document everything just to make sure anything is covered that you would search. And then uh, Juliana, yes, I will also notate that and resend it to you as well. Um, but if the support page doesn't have anything covered, by all means, um, send me an email or uh, at any point, it's just kevin at onyxmaps.com with your question and I, I can definitely get it answered as well. Or if wh whatever's preferred or we do have the dedicated support team, you can call, I, I do have in that email um, our support number. They're available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, and even during peak season, because they staffed up our uh, team so much, I mean, it's maybe worst case scenario, like a three wait, three minute wait time. It's, it's incredible how fast they're able to knock these out. Um, or you can even just do a, a chat question via the app or from our website. Yeah, if you hit this bottom left little chat icon, you can type your question that goes directly to our support team and they, they answer that immediately as well. But multiple resources, whatever your preferred method is, you can even do the chat thing in the app as well, like I showed you. Doesn't look like anything else yet, but I'll give a minute if it's, we're typing or anything. Um, Trying to think of anything I might have missed. Hop into the app again. I guess while we're looking at it, I can show you like like I'd shown offline maps, new offline map from the computer. Again, this is not downloading the map yet. This is just telling your phone, hey, I identified this spot. I'm gonna wanna save that later. So I can specify the size, all of that. Hit save. And it's saying, please note, offline maps do not download to your computer. You need to open the app, select offline maps, and then click the icon to actually download it. But it's kind of nice on your computer. Again, if you're already looking at it and you're like, I'm gonna need that outside of service, you can queue it up. And then if I pop back to my phone again, go back into the app. And go to offline maps. That map that I queued up on the computer shows up here and it's in that red and white checkered icon, which means it's been queued up, but it's not actually saved. So I would just, this little down arrow, tap that, it will download to my phone and then you're good to go. But that, that's one of the newer features they just launched was the ability to kind of queue up offline maps to your phone, which is pretty cool. Um, 
All right. Not seeing anything else pop in yet. I think I got everyone else that needs the invitation email sent, or I'm going to after this. Um, again, if there's anyone else on here that still needs it sent, just shoot me an email or Mike and we can get it coordinated to you. Um, and if any other questions come up that I haven't covered here, again, the support page, our own website in the app, it has the support, or you can call our customer service or email me directly, whatever your preferred method is with your question. We'll definitely get it figured out for you. But on that note then, um, I think we'll call it. I appreciate everyone's time. Um, super excited about all of this. Yeah, thank you guys for letting me walk you through it. Um, I'm excited to see the different use cases. I'm, I'm constantly amazed of a, a hunting product, how relevant it is to real estate, but like a ton of other industries. And it's, it's really cool to find out ways to optimize it to make it useful for everyone. Um, so yeah, keep questions coming. Love to have you guys as users. I um, appreciate your time and hope you guys have a, a great rest of your Tuesday. Thanks everyone. Take care.